a mesmerizing glow in our night sky. The ISS has become the crown jewel of space research. But as we reach into the stars and our sense of wonder broadens, the reality of human conflict follows us forward. For the past 25 years, China has been barred from access to the ISS and its over 3,000 experiments due to geopolitical concerns raised by the United States. But now, China has an answer. Its new space station, the Tiangong, is finally nearing completion. And with it comes over 1,000 advanced experiments of their own, a futuristic layout, and a promise to give the ISS a run for its money. This is how China plans to compete with the ISS. Before 2021, the International Space Station was the only remaining space station in orbit. That wasn't always the case, though. The first space station was launched by the Russians in 1971, called the Salyut. It was followed by the Skylab in 1973, developed by the United States, and then the Russian Mir in 1986. These stations are all long gone by the late 90s, having been deorbited and crashed back to Earth just a short while after their launch. But the Mir did last for around a decade. The ISS, a joint project in which Russia and the United States managed to come to an agreement post-Cold War, is launched in 1998, along with support from the Japanese, the Europeans, and the Canadians. No sign of China on the scene yet, however, but they do enter the fray in the 2010s, with the launch of the Tiangong-1 and the Tiangong-2, but they're eventually deorbited just a few years later. These labs, however, were quite small and conducted only about 100 different experiments, making them rather unimpressive compared to the ISS. The new Tiangong space station promises to be far more impressive, however. And I'm not just saying that to keep my social credit score. Just a simple statistical comparison to the ISS shows something far more comparable. The ISS has a mass of about 420 tons and a length of 109 meters, whereas the Tiangong is about 100 tons and only 37 meters. But as they say, it's not always about the size, but about how you use it. The Tiangong is far more modern, with a more efficient habitat system, and it can thus carry about 70% as many crew members as the ISS, making it decently comparable in terms of experimental output. And that modernity shows even superficially. The ISS has received criticism for looking rather mechanical, kind of like a boiler room in the basement of a 1980s military bunker. And it's not exactly the type of scene you'd imagine coming out of an episode of Star Trek. The new modern Chinese station, however, looks sleek, efficient, and something far more aesthetically pleasing. But what exactly do they plan on doing on this new space station? Thus far, over 1,000 experiments are queued up to be conducted on the station. These experiments will test everything from the effects of microgravity and cosmic radiation on building structures to how fluid dynamics change the nature of evolutionary growth in organisms. And we'll even look at black holes, dark matter, and many other interstellar phenomena. And it won't just be China conducting experiments on the station, with experiments from India, Mexico, Switzerland, and 14 other countries slated to head to the Tiangong. Safe to say that America and Japan probably won't be invited to this party, however. 
More on these experiments in a moment, but it might be useful to first take a look at the actual layout of the station. The station is divided into three modules, the Tihane core module, which is the main segment of the station, and the Wenshin and Mengshin experimental modules, which are primarily labs used for research. Each of these experimental modules have solar arrays attached to their ends, allowing for the production of solar power. Let's focus first on the Tihane core module. Its forward docking hub allows two separate spacecraft to dock. Both the Tianzhu and the Shenzhou spacecrafts have docked there already, including the first manned flight to the station in the summer of 2021, which brought Teng Hongbo, Ni Heisheng, and Li Boming to the station for over 90 days. This module contains the living quarters for up to three separate crew members, the life support systems for the entire station, and provides guidance, navigation, power, and propulsion. It also contains what some have dubbed the China Arm, which is a giant robotic arm outside the station with seven degrees of control, which can be used to help maneuver modules, ships, and other equipment outside the station. Moving on, the first of its two secondary modules, the Wenshin module, is primarily a laboratory that provides pressurized environments for zero-gravity experiments, as well as areas to conduct experiments outside the module, exposed nakedly to space. It has its own robotic arm, smaller and weaker than the main robotic arm, but significantly more accurate. It also has its own airlock that is far larger than the main module's airlock, which will allow astronauts to conduct spacewalks outside the station. The module also provides secondary living quarters, allowing for an additional three crew members to live aboard the station. The second of the two additional modules, the Mengshin module, is the same in certain ways, but different in others. It contains no living quarters, but instead contains a larger research capacity, providing eight internal separate laboratories for research. It's also where the station can launch microsatellites for research. The main Tiane module is 16.6 .6 meters in length, with the two laboratory modules measuring in at around 17.9 meters in length. It's worth pointing out that I'm probably mispronunciating most of these names, not being a native Chinese speaker after all. But, you know, I think I'm doing all right for some random Canadian YouTuber. Anyways, back to those experiments we were talking about earlier. One of the breakthrough experiments is called the HERD, which stands for High Energy Cosmic Radiation Detection. It will study and search for dark matter, primarily through the use of a device called the calorimeter, which studies heat changes and fluctuations over time, to put it simply. If it's able to better understand and locate dark matter, this could help explain why the universe is expanding at the rate at which it is. Another experiment housed on the station will be the Polar 2 project, which will attempt to clarify the properties of gamma ray bursts, which are emitted from collapsing stars and the collisions of neutron stars. These are predicted to be the largest and the most violent explosions in the universe, so understanding them is rather important. It will conduct this study using the most up-to-date polarometers, it would be a bit difficult to explain how these devices work without an entirely separate video, but it's safe to say that it's rather complicated and pretty damn cool. Some other experiments planned on the station surround cancer research, in which scientists will investigate the effects of zero gravity on the growth of cancer cells, hoping it might lead to new therapies. There are studies focusing on infrared light from nebulae, studies looking at the formation of storms on Earth, and even a project that will send over 12,000 seeds to the station and study how outer space conditions will affect the growth and development of our most common crops and plants. And perhaps even better news, almost all these mentioned experiments are multinational joint projects between over a dozen different nations.
But will all this be enough to challenge the supremacy of the ISS? Will this produce a new space race in which NASA and its allies accelerate their progress in order to keep pace with China's new rapid space development? The future looks bright if we can keep our tempers at a minimum. And as we reach further and further into the void, perhaps this will lead not to more conflict, but to more collaboration, moving forward not divided in the clades of humanity, but united as one. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. We're a new channel, but the plan is to create more content just like this each and every week. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe and comment below what you'd like to see next. See you next time.